A $700 blind all-in leads to a 4K pot. This game was madness. I just woke up. It's 3 in the morning. It's 3 p.m. I'm standing next to my friend. I'm giving him carbon monoxide. I spoke English for 10 seconds and I went 0 for 2, so I decided to stop the recording right there. But uh, I'm going to go to Boston Billiards. We're going to play poker. It's going to be a good time. Hopefully you win money, not dust. You know the drill. Without further ado, let's go. at Boston Billiards, kid. I sit down at the 2-5 game and buy in for $1,000. I actually get dealt a hand right away. As I look down at Pocket Kings, the Cowboys, yes, quite fitting. I was just in Texas, and it seems these fuckers followed me all the way back up north. So, roll tide, let's go with it. Under the Gun 1 raises to $45. I put in a 3-bet to 150 The Straddler cold calls... And under the gun, one folds. So not really what I thought, but okay, that's perfectly fine. Going heads up in position to a flop of nine six two two spades. Straddler checks it over to me. I think the straddler's going to have a lot of middling pairs, maybe large suited connectors. So I think he's going to call or fold regardless of the sizing. Let's place a bet to the tune of $150. The straddler doesn't think too long before making the call. Let's go off to a turn card, see a brick, and get all the money in. The poker gods say, go pound sand, bucko. Ace of spades, the worst card in the deck. Holy shit. The straddler checks it over to me, and I don't think we can get value from anything worse. Could be losing to a lot of hands now. So let's go from trying to get value to shutting down. Check, check, check. Let's see a river play. The fifth card is the ten of clubs. Once again... The straddler checks it over to me. I really don't see how we're getting any value from worse. Same logic as the street prior. So I check it back, and the straddler flips over jack four of spades. You know what? I was kind of suspicious of Robbie Lou, but maybe she's on to something because this hand clearly never loses at showdown. The straddler takes this one down. And Pocket Kings go straight down the pisser. Next, we have a little blind on blind violence. I'm in the straddle with King 10 offsuit, and the small blind raises to $35. I stick in the call, and we go off to a flop of 10, 9, 4, all diamonds. The small blind checks it over to me. On monotone boards, I've read that small bets work the best, so I start off with a fourth pot, and the small blind says, dude, you got it, I don't, don't even sweat it. Folds right away, and we take that. <coughs> I just, I had a hairball or something, and I don't know what that was, but we take down a pot of, like, 15 cents. I'm gonna go buy an apple from the candy store. Here we look down at pocket sixes on the button. There's a straddle on, and the cutoff raises to 25. This is on the smaller size, and this is an opponent that I wanted to get involved with. I'd rather play this in a bloated pot in position, heads up, rather than going 36 ways to a flop. So I decided to take a less standard approach and put in a 3-bet to 75. The straddler once again cold calls. So the three of us go off to a flop of ace-8-8. Eight, eight. Straddler checks, and the cutoff does no such thing. He places a bet of $100. <sighs> Considering the straddlers behind me, I don't really think I can do anything here other than to fold. This is the wildest thing I've seen at a 2-5 table. The player to my left said, hey, buddy, down there, you wanted to go home, right? Why don't you just blind raise all in? And the guy's like, really? Say I won't, bitch. And the guy's like, you won't. He's like, all right, fine. I'm all in. Everyone's like, huh? He's like, yeah. I'm all in. Take it or leave it. Everyone's looking around like, what, what just happened? The cards haven't even been dealt yet. We're playing two, five, seven hundred. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't instigate them, man. What, 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 what? The first player to act calls the 700. 
action folds to me, and I look down at Ace King. Well, I have seventeen hundred dollars. We are playing hmm, a casual two and a half big blinds deep. I have the easiest all in of my life. That's what I do. I stick it all in the middle. Action folds back to the original caller who goes all in. So just like that, we're going three ways all in to a run out. Flock comes in all spades. I have the king of spades. Turn comes an absolute brick. And the river is a queen of spades. We river the king high flush. The original caller is like, God, dude, really? He apparently had pocket queens. Wow. The guy who shipped it in blind flips over 9-8 of clubs. Somehow, all three of us wake up with really good hands. Why be a professional poker player and try to out big brain and skill people when you could just shove it all in preflop and run equity? I, I should do this more often, honestly. Next, we pick up queen-10 offsuit in the small blind. There are three limps to me, and monkey see, monkey do, I limp as well. And the big blind checks his option. So we go five ways to a flop of queen, queen, nine. Yeah, we flop trips. <laughs> since I'm in the worst position imaginable, I decide to check. Planning on check raising, since everyone else has an option. But they all exercise that option with a check. So not ideal, as we still go five ways to a turn card, which peels off the seven of diamonds. Board gets a little bit more connected. Few more draws come in, maybe a pair. For that reason, I would like to check raise again. So I just tap the table. And this time, under the gun bets $25. Action folds to me. Listen, $25 is cute. It's a good donation. I appreciate it. But my car insurance is $100 a month. So I would really like to cover that. I put in a check raise to $100. Action folds to under the gun, and he says, dude, I could give a shit less about your car insurance. I don't care. I'd fold. I have nothing. And I'm like, man, come on. So we win a little bit of money, uh, but we don't get the full coverage on Geico. Going to need to speak to that gecko once the month comes around. Uh, I don't know. We're going to have to make some calls. Next, my eyeballs glance down at 9-8 of hearts in the straddle. That is a pretty hand. The button raises to $35. The small blind and I make the call. Flop comes Jack, Jack, 10. We flop an open-ended straight draw. Action checks to the pre-flop raiser, who decides to check it back. Still going three ways to a turn card, which peels off the four of spades. Now the small blind leads for $75. This is the same guy who played Jack, 4. It's like I'm playing against Robbie Lou if she got a sex change. So I'm not really giving him all that much credit. Him, her, whatever, they, I don't know, whatever the, whatever this thing is. I'm not giving it credit for having a strong hand at the moment because I saw him play Jack four. He could realistically have a lot here, but if he does have a Jack, I think if we improve to a straight, we're going to make a lot of money. I proceed with a call. The button doesn't want any smoke. He decides to get out of the way and fold. Go and heads up to a river, which voila. Chef's kiss, it's an offsuit seven. Oh, beautiful. The small blind checks it over to us. At this point, before I bet, the small blind raises his cards as if he's going to muck. I think this actually is a telltale sign that he's going to call if I place a bet. This motion doesn't change the fact that I'm going to bet $250. So I stick to the plan and I bet out for the entire size of the pot. The small blind doesn't muck his cards, who would have thought, but he doesn't call right away either. After thinking for a while, the small blind says, all right, call. He flips over pocket nines. I sheepishly turn over a straight. The money comes my way, and I'm never complaining when that happens. The very next shuffle. I don't even have time to rack my chips. This is f f 10 seconds later. I look down at ace king of hearts in the big blind. The same player raises to 50 and well, price of poker's going up, buddy. I three bet to 200. The straddler pauses for a long, long while. Whenever there's a late position open and a three bet, 
and then another blind tanks. It's almost always indicative of like pocket eights through queens because they're like, dude, I have no idea what to do here. Do I do I put another raise? Do I just call? I have no, I don't know what to do. <laughs> it's kind of a weird spot for all of those hands. So when this guy tanks, I'm kind of getting the vibe that he has a hand like pocket jacks, maybe queens, maybe tens, somewhere in there. Anyways, after a long think, the straddler puts in a four bet to five hundred dollars the button says both of you guys are batshit crazy i want none of this he folds action is back on me and i swiftly jam it all in there i'm not playing a four bet pot out of position and i have a piss missile either fold your cards or i'll see you on the river the straddler says put your money where your mouth is bucko he sticks in the call and we go off to a run out if we win this pot I will be up over 3,000 on the session, and if we lose, I'll be up a few hundred closer to the even mark. A lot riding on this. Let's see an ace or a king. Run out comes. Brick, brick, brick. Please show an ace or a king. Still nothing on the turn. We have one more card. Show me an ace or a king. Absolutely not. And we lose to pocket jacks. We were up huge from a flip, and we just give it all right back. <laughs> Still up on the session, but this one kind of hurts. Mom, do you want to hear about this really cool hand that I played? Yeah. So I had nine eight of diamonds, right? Yeah. I, there were two people that limped. Yeah. I raised yeah. the $65. Yeah. The straddler called, and both limpers made the call as well. Okay. The flop came 10 7 4 rainbow, one diamond. 10, 9, 8, 7. So you had a straight. I don't... Oh, I don't straight close. Flush. Close. Nope. I, I love the enthusiasm, but I had <laughs> an open-ended straight draw. Okay. So technically I have nine high. If they went to showdown oh. right now, I have dog shit. Okay. And I'm certainly not going to win. Okay. So when you can't win, what do you do? You fold? You put all the money in the middle. Oh, God. I oh bet... I bet $90 and they all folded and we win. Oh my God. Yep. And you didn't have anything? I had nine high. Anyway, oh my God. God. It's an easy game. Oh. Want to hear me play another one? This time we have queen deuce of diamonds in the small blind. The button, myself, and the big blind limp. And the straddler checks his option. So we go four ways to a flop. King, eight, three, two diamonds. Okay. So we do have a flush draw. Do you know how many diamonds makes a flush? Five, that's correct. <laughs> what would you do here? If you know me, I'd be folded. You'd fold? <laughs> what a nit. I plan on check raising because we're playing shorthanded and everyone limps, so no one can be too strong here. I do the thing where I tap the table, no money gets put in. And the turn card comes a jack of hearts. Okay. How I'm do you not... feel about this card? I don't remember what you had. <laughs> All so right. bad. All right. I need to see it in front of me. I can't remember. Moral of the story, I check again. The straddler bets $30. I check raise to 100 and everyone folds. Okay. All right. Cool. 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 A little while passes before we pick up two ladies. Unfortunately, it's a card form. Never translates to real life. That's an ongoing issue that I need to sort out. But for now... We're in the straddle. The big blind limps, and I raise to $40. The big blind makes the call. He only has $60 behind, so probably going to get in somehow. But the flop comes ace, seven, six. Shit. He checks, and I'm just going to check this one back. The turn is a better card. It's another ace, so decreases the probability that he has one. And he also probably shouldn't think I have one either now. He checks to me once again, and I bet $25. The big blind jams it all in there. I snap call, and we go off to a river, which comes the nine of spades. He flips over the funny haha sex number, and we obviously win with a better two pair. GG's. Here's the picture of my little army defense tower that we got going on. I played balloons as a kid. And this would make the little monkeys proud. Glad to be carrying on the legacy. Let's move on to the next hand. All right, my phone ran out of storage. These next two hands are very interesting. I can't not put them in here. We have king-queen off in the straddle. 
the button small blind and big blind all limp to me. The small blind only has 114 total, so I kind of wanted to raise to an amount where the button folds, the other guy jams, and then we just go heads up to a run out. So I make it $90. The button calls, the small blind does jam all in, but the big blind calls, I call, and then the button calls again. So 460 or something like that in the middle, and everyone and their mother is going to a flop of king, jack, eight, two spades. The big blind leads right out for $100. Very, very weird hand so far. I think if the big blind had a hand like king, jack, or any strong king, he would raise pre-flop. Keep it $100 into around 460 which feels really weak. There are a bunch of draws out there, like queen 10, 10, 9, flush draws. I feel like this is more of a blocker bet that just wants to see a cheap turn rather than something that's betting for value. This player only has around 550 behind, so I'm thinking if I put in a raise, he'll feel pretty handcuffed to either jam all in or fold, just because the weird stack depth. So I decide to raise it up right away. The button folds, and the action's back on the big blind. So like I said, I think he's either going to jam or fold, but clearly I know nothing about poker because he puts in the flat call, leaving himself 250 behind. Quite odd, but okay. nonetheless, we go off to a turn card, which peels off a jack. Big blind checks it over to me, and I shrug and just shove all my money in the middle. He also shrugs. A lot of shrugging going on at this table. We are all in, though, and the let's see a river card, and it comes a brick! And this player reveals 10-8 of spades. Holy sh**. He had a lot of outs. None of them hit. The small blind looks disappointed, defeated. That's great for me because we probably take his money as well. And that is, in fact, the case because everything gets pushed my way. We triumphantly take down the pot with King Jack. King Queen, sorry. <laughs> Silly old me. We'd still take the money, though. Our stack has gone from a measly defense tower to a full-on castle. This is where I would start to take on the mobs and the BFBs. It really wouldn't be an issue with this deck. Sincerely making the balloons monkeys proud. I have 5-4 offsuit in the big blind. We're playing three-handed at this point. I raised the $40, and the button straddle alert makes the call. Flop comes king, queen, ten, rainbow. This is a coordinated flop that hits my range, so I start off with a bet of $60, and the button makes the call. Going off to a turn card, which peels off the Six of Hearts. I don't think there are many hands that are calling the flop that are necessarily going to fold the turn. I think there are a lot of hands like Jack-10 or Queen-Jack or any Jack for that matter that are going to call another bet. I decide to take my Piss Missile 5 high baloney and check. The button, thankfully, checks it back. We go off to a river card, which peels off another Six. Now we are sitting here with five high and a dream. The straight draw is bricked out, and I think there are going to be a lot of hands that don't feel comfortable facing a bet. Like any ten, any jack, any queen. He could have even called the flop with ace high because that's a gut shot. That's probably going to fold to a bet. So a lot of hands can fold to any bet, and we're obviously not going to win. If we checked, dude, we have a five. We have five. Five high. We could still realistically have all of the kings, so I decide to place a bet. Repping any king X, I throw out $225, and the button thankfully lets it go. This was the last hand of the night, at least interesting one. That is, uh, we were in the game for something, out for more than something. That's a profit of at least something, right? Yeah, thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And see you in the next one. Goodbye.